Hi guys, Anthony from The Hot End. In this episode, I'm going to give you a walkthrough of AstroPrint. So, what is AstroPrint? Uh, AstroPrint is software that will run on your PC Duino or Raspberry Pi 1, 2 or 3. It allows you to monitor your printers. It allows you to uh, send your models up to the cloud to slice using the Cura engine or uh, slicer. It lets you monitor your prints on any internet enabled device like your tablet or smartphone, which is really cool. So if you're out and about going through McDonald's drive through or on the toilet and you want to see how your print's going, you can just log into the interface on your phone and it will show you straight away. It'll show you where it's up to, how long it's got to go, as well as a real-time video stream, which works on the internet as well. Uh, it also lets you override your printer controls, start and stop prints um, from the, the web interface, and I'll go through some of the features now and show you. Basically, to get started, you need to download the image file for AstroPrint, which is here for Raspberry Pi 1, 2, or 3, which will be the majority of people, I would imagine. And you've also got PC Duino options here as well. So you download the image and then you uh, flash it to your mini or micro SD card and then pop it in your Raspberry Pi and turn it on. And there's full instructions here on how to do that. I might actually do that in a different video so that'll be something else. Alrighty, so once you've installed the software um, and connected your printer, you're going to get this interface here. Well, you actually get two. This is the cloud. And then if you, you can log into the um, printer directly on your LAN. So this is the stream that's um, on my LAN, so this isn't online. And this just gives me a basic rundown of what I'm printing, its percentage, time remaining, what layer it's up to, um, and some basic controls. So your temperature, and then over here you've got a real-time video of what's happening. And the beauty of this is this will work on your phone or on your tablet or wherever you are. So that, that's the point. So if we close this, and um, by the way, it doesn't have all the information here because I'm slicing using Simplify 3D and then just uploading G-code to AstroPrint. It's just, I prefer my own slicing. So if you want to log into the cloud version, you go to astroprint.com, sign up for an account, which is all free. All this is free. And then in here, you get this menu. All right, so in here we go, I'll go through them one by one. Design uploader is where we can upload our STL file. So if I do that, this is just a, um, a Desert Eagle STL. So I'm uploading that now to the cloud. And then once it's in there, we'll be able to actually slice it online. So I've uploaded it um, to the cloud and then it gives me a model here or a quick view of what I uploaded. It's actually a down the barrel look of a Desert Eagle. Squeeze it. Put your tongue back in your mouth. <laughs> you can set up your multiple printers over here. So you choose what printer you're gonna you want to slice it on. You can set up your different materials here for PLA, PETG, um, ABS if you still use that but not many pro people probably still do because they've all died of cancer. But uh, yeah, you get my point. So you can add in all of your materials here. So if we wanted to, we could say PETG 1.75 millimeters, and we print that at about 220C, say filament. Over here, we choose our quality, and this will let us change the um, slicing values. So, normal, I would say I do probably 200 um, as my standard, and then best would be 100, and draft would be 300. So, we can go into our advanced settings here, and it will let us change everything so this is for online slicing i don't actually use this but there is nothing wrong with doing this it, all the settings are here so we could say layer height we want to do this one at 0 0.2 uh, perimeters three that's good so this even supports spiral vase mode which is really good 
Um, yeah, we'll need supports. All this is good. And we go to infill. And we can choose uh, what we want it to be. So 0 for 0%, zero 0.2 for 20%, 0 0.3, 30%, all the way up to 1, which will be 100%. So 20%. Fill pattern. You can choose whatever you like. Honeycomb. Rectilinear. And most of these settings you should be familiar with because they'll be in nearly every slicer. And then under speed, you can tell it's um, all of your settings. I, I'm not going to go through everything because you've, you all know most of these settings. They're the same in Slicer, Simplify 3D, and Cura. But all the options are here, just like you do with those. Alright, so now we can say Slice. And it's going to slice that in the cloud. And I believe that I've set that up to use uh, Slicer as the as the slicer. So that's going to go through and then slice that up ready for us to print. And then when it's in under my designs, we can just click and then print. And that's going to just automatically send it to your printer via wireless or um, cable or however you've got your, your um, Raspberry Pi connected to your network. I use um, Cat5 because I just don't like any of the delay of Wi-Fi but if you just plug a Wi-Fi dongle in your printer is then fully wireless so we'll go back to the dashboard now under file manager this will show us the designs that we've got sliced in here ready to go um, Thingiverse it's got a full integration to Thingiverse so if we want to click on any particular model it'll just bring it straight into the um, software so this is a cool model here the wireframe skull pen holder thing and um, from here we can send it straight to the printer or add it to our files or download it so we'll go bang add it to our file list and then it'll appear in our file list like before so we can then slice it or do what we like but we'll go back here again and now that should be in our file manager and there it is here from there we can click on it and view the model and then we can go through and slice it just like we did before see here's all our options here um, monitor as you would imagine this is what i use when i'm on the train going to work thinking oh, i hope my printer's printing and it's not air printing and it's not stuffed up so if you don't want to use all your mobile bandwidth you can just do a picture press uh, the button here it's going to take a snapshot and that's what i'm printing if you want to you can just switch it to video and then give me a video preview of what it's doing right now so real-time video and that's exactly what my printer is printing right now which is the piggy bank um, Veroni and here as it does on the um, local interface it tells you what you're up to login uh, sorry what you're up to time left and layer off as well as your temperature so if you can see that it's air printing or you've got a clog or there's something seriously screwed up bang cancel that's that's why I like it okay moving on print captures so when you're doing a print you can tell it to do a screen tell it to take a photo at an interval so you can tell it to take a photo on every layer or uh, at a time interval just like with any with any time lapse and the good thing about the Raspberry Pi and with this software is it uses any USB uh, webcam that's compatible with Linux so this is just a $10 cheapy no-name webcam on there and it's, it's working fine so if you tell it to do a time lapse, I've set this one to do it by layer, it's going to automatically take a picture every time it does a new layer, and then it's going to compile it into a video here for you to view and watch. So it is actually moving. Layer 2, layer 3, there we go. So here we've got our time lapse. From there, you can send it straight to Facebook, to YouTube, or download it and view it locally, where it's obviously a lot faster. 3D Print Cloud, this is a um, uh, like the NetFab Online, so this will repair your dodgy files if they're broken. Um, I haven't used this myself because it's a paid thing, $15 a month, so that'd be more for the professionals I would imagine. Print History will show you all the ones you've started and stopped. So you can see obviously no one has a 100% success rate. If they say they do, they're lying or they've got a $5,000 printer. Um, these prints I've obviously well, I've started and then the offset was ro uh, wrong from the first layer so I've stopped it adjusted and then reprinted so that's why it says print fail 
but um, it's only due to the first layer height to get it right. Uh, slicer settings, which will be like I showed you before, it lets you go through and set absolutely everything, nearly as much um, as Simplify 3D. But it's it's more like the slicer interface, which I prefer over Cura and Slicer. Printer profiles, we can set up our multiple printers now. From what I understand, you can't have multiple printers off the one Astro Box or the one Raspberry Pi. But if you get multiple Raspberry Pis, you can all set them all up in here in the one interface with no problem. So in here you can see that I've got my start and stop commands for this printer. I've got my build size. Um, I'm using Slicer as the slicing engine if when I do online slicing. And I run a G28 which is home and then a G29 which is a um, auto leveling command before I do a print. Um, material profiles lets you set your temperatures for your different um, filaments. So PETG, you can tell it that you want to do it print at 220, filament diameter 175 and you can do that for all of your filaments and get them all in here so it's as easy as um, just choosing the particular filament you're going to print with and it'll know the temperature based on what you've preset. Okay, settings shows you your basic account settings, so there's nothing in there that's of any interest. And yes, you all know my email address because it's on the about tab in YouTube. Brain fart. Now, uh, Leo Polly. I can't remember what this one is. Sorry, my internet's going a little bit slow at the moment. I'm on the National Broadband Network in Australia and it's still not as good as it should be. Um, so basically the rest of these are just image uh, image repositories like Thingiverse. So there you have a really basic rundown guys. If you want to see uh, this more in depth or you want to see a how to, like a how to install it on your Raspberry Pi video, just let me know in the comments below. If you'd like to um, um, one of the other features of this which I forgot to mention is that it sends you an email as soon as your print's finished. So when you're at work you get an email, ding, your print is now finished and it tells you how long, how many hours it's been running for. Now these are all really cool touches and I like this. So if you like it, give it a thumbs up. If you want to see me do a how to install it video, just let me know in the comments below. See you on the next video guys. Thanks.